Zraswicha, and welcome to this and that. I am Dave Lees. And oh, Boje, have we got a good one for you. I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. <laughs> yes, this is the skating lesson. We are going to be discussing all things of the 2021 Russian Figure Skating Championships. So if you're new here, subscribe below and smash that like button. We have so much to discuss about because, you know, Jonathan, when I'm right, I'm really right. And I believe about three years ago, I picked a daughter and I just want to say that she has become champion Karasia Adin. The three, three time Russian champion Anna Sherbakova. And where is your girl shopping with hot Sergei at the mall? Okay, uh, you know, I mean. <laughs> but but you're absolutely right. I remember you um, were conversing back and forth with Danny G back in 2016 mm -hmm. about Anna being your favorite. And she had, she was off the ice, I think, at the time because of the leg and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't, yeah, okay. And you were you were like, that's my girl. Because, well, no, I think it was 2016 because it was before, right before the Junior Grand Prix final that Alina won. Yeah. Uh, well, either way, either way. You have always been like her biggest supporter. And she's, yeah. what's interesting about her is she's somewhere where the Trusova fans and the Kostyanaya fans meet. Mm -hmm. I think everyone, if you're a diehard Trusova fan, question mark, I think you still admire Anna. Mm -hmm. Anna, excuse me. And I think if you are a diehard Kostranaya fan, you still appreciate. Or if you were a diehard Terry fan, like I am. And that is what it's <laughs> really about. Okay, okay, okay. My girl was overcome. It has been a difficult year. There have been traitors. There have been those who have tried to take us down. We had a sweep for the world championships that was right there. And right. it took a global pandemic of which we have never seen before to stop us from sweeping that we were days away from sweeping the world. Literally forward. days. <clears throat> we were trying to sew up becoming the head of the Russian Federation eventually. And you know, it is just, it is time. Okay, it is time. Today, and who's to say, do we you have think Russian oil help? money sponsoring us? We've got the G on our masks for Gazprom, and we are ready, okay? We have the rublea coming in, honey. It was a beautiful year. Plushenka has tried to disrespect us in every way. The ungrateful girls have left, but you know, Terry will rise again. And that is what this championship was really about. You know, disease, COVID, it is, it is a happen, you know, but we- And even Terry was moved by her ability to conquer a pandemic. <laughs> I just feel that it was a beautiful event. <laughs> it was the one chin, she had a chin moment down here that it like coiled up and I was like, that's it. <clears throat> I was like, that is it. I see it. I see it. She's a real person. It was the moment of the competition. Yeah. That chin quiver. I don't know exactly what Dr. Shvetsky gave the girls after the short program. The rumor is it's something that are cardiac glycosides has been the rumor of what the Russians are taking. Because as you know, um, there were, you know, COVID has hit the top Russians very hard. And we always ask, why is that doctor there by the board? Right. And of course, you know, Anna Sherbakova almost collapsing uh, after- After the short program. And we see her, what she said were smelling salts. There's been speculation and debate of what was that happening? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, not what you expect to see on a warm up at a, you know, a national championships. But I mean, I think you could, anyone could tell that these people, uh, these skaters were not in the best of health for the short program. 24 hours later, energy to quads getting through the program, uh, you know, a hundred degree fever the night before today every respiratory issues for everyone all yes. gone 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 now if wada were to be serious about taking doping seriously they should ask to see the the um drug tests from the national championships you know in the u.s they test the top four and then a random skater would love to see that from the russian figure skating championships but beautiful performance yeah anyway Right, yeah. <clears throat> but let's let's not pretend that we did not witness the two events side by side, twenty four hours, and not be like, wait a second, 
<laughs> I know, isn't it funny? In some ways, it's always a different conversation when we do these two events. And yet in some ways, it's always the same conversation <laughs> when we do these two events, yeah. It's interesting, and I have to say, and I'm gonna pull this up because I think it's really important. And I think the person who needed to hear it most was Jonathan Byer because I'm like, I don't know how you get in the holidays, Dave, like you have been tweeting and reposting and watching and see aliving and you have, you know, nephews I know you were going big with for the holiday and all this sort of stuff. <clears throat> I got a bit down this one, like watching, watching Russian nationals, I found myself a little cranky and I was sad by that. And I was like, what's happening? And then I saw Phil Hirsch's tweet um, that I wish I could pull up in a timely fashion now. This is all about Trump. Um, where he, it was on Facebook to where he talked about how regardless of the era, the last three or four. That's exactly, yeah. He was like, I am tired of hearing people complain about yeah. lack of skating skills, this kind of choreography, whatever it was implying. <laughs> and. And he was like, this is the sport. So you have to step back and you have to absolutely marvel at the fact that in this current sport, all these girls did something amazing. I mean, in that you, know, okay, yeah. Yes and no. Like I understand what Phil is saying and I agree with him that it was a fantastic competition, right? Yeah. But at the same point, uh, point Phil Hirsch writes about doping. Phil Hirsch um, knows about skating skills. He'd love Michelle Kwan skating. And yes, I agree with him and understand, but I think that you can love the sport of skating and still believe all of those things to be true. I can love this skating and be like, yes, Anna Shevakova really could turn her toe out and learn to um, extend you know, from the hip and not have a sickle Flintstone foot that's jabbing into the ice. But I still love her skating and I love her personality and you know, her character on the ice and I can also say that I really miss the days of you know the beautiful skating skills of Gorgiev and Grinkoff, and when there was more time for art for art's sake on the ice, when you know a beautiful program was to Rachmaninoff piano concerto number no. two and not um, a Queen medley, uh, or right. one skating to the same song of Adele, you, right? right. But, and then, but that's why I think I love this week so much is because we get. We get the competition aspect and the drama from Russia. We get the sport, the- uh, The sport I fell in love with is happening somewhere in Asia. Don't, I think it's a different aspect of the sport, right? But it, they're completely different. And there's a reason why there are so fewer quads over there and more in Russia, but both spectacular, both phenomenal and both keeping the sport going at this point in time. So, but I understand, I would say that the short program wasn't great skating, but look, I mean, I'm not a pharmacologist, but that whatever deserves an endorsement for that free skate was incredible. With two yeah. plays there, that was the bee's knees. And, and I think that was also part of it is how shocked the team even was at how effective whatever happened in between those two events was. They were like, whoa. Honey, like I'll take a yeah. selfie with him. If he can do that, yeah, the belt world. Are the quad crazy? flip. And like, come on, Anna. Like, the, very, very impressive. The quad lutz and the quad flip. I don't think it, someone will be able to know. And this it's not much. a free program, you know. Really, um, recently because she had very bad um, pneumonia. But they were. Julian was saying it was COVID. You know, they. At one point in time, she tested negative. Who knows? But, the girl was impaired, okay? And the yeah. lots, regardless. So I think, um, you know, a tough road. It's very interesting to me because the pairs in Russian nationals all seemed uh, very rusty. And I think that most- Kind of in an, in an expectable, appropriate way. I was like, this, this seems more in line with how I think that most nationals would be going. Hold on. It's interesting, yeah, I think for most of the skaters, it's interesting that that amount of time that they had when they were off the ice, wherever it is, and the Russians weren't off the ice for that long because remember they put them in a bubble after um, the initial quarantine period. So they were back sooner than some of the other, of course there are rumors that no one was, you know, around the world, right? About who, what amount of time that people were off. But for the amount of time that we know, they're, they were off. It has impacted 
everyone. In some, it was good thing that happened for ladies being in that difficult transition period. It's interesting how much it affected them. For whatever reason, it the growth spurts happened that everyone had feared, talked about happened. You know, anytime we see a young Russian girl, how many times for years we read in the comments when they grow, when they get a growth spurt, when this happens. Well, with this pandemic, it happened, right? Like across yeah. the board. Um, but I think you can see it in the pairs. And I don't know if it's because of the simpatico that is really uh, the two is one, that extra timing, you know, and two people's health and one gets COVID and the other one, but it was like a rustiness, you know? And I think that the Russian ladies seem like they're coming back, right? Like they are, they had a very difficult period. We saw Trusova really struggle with the timing of her jumps and we see her coming back and we see, Anna, who got taller, and she is, you know, becoming organized in Balieva, and we see them moving forward. The pairs, not as much. The pairs look more like what we see in the U.S. or what we see elsewhere, just not as polished. And, and right. I think that that's really the illnesses and losing the time and what well, was interesting. Are we migrating to pairs for a moment? Shall we go? No, we can start with pairs. Why not? Okay. okay. <clears throat> so. So here's, here's someone I want to talk about is um, we had the junior champions in Pemflova and Rilov mm -hmm. last year. This has to be, he's someone, I, I, I don't always watch them because they're usually on the cusp of some placements. Watching him in that free skate, I was like, this is one of the most magical pairs men I have, I think I've ever seen. Like the way we were talking about um, the different aesthetics of when the pair guy will throw the lady, right? And sometimes it's so exciting when certain Chinese teams, for instance, can achieve great height and distance, but it really looks like the guy's about to fall over. Mm -hmm. The way he launches her into the air with his back right up and just a beautiful step forward, it's, there's something pretty freaking remarkable about it. And also when IJS was first featuring all these like features on the lifts and it involved the guy taking steps with her and they were trying to get extra features and all this sort of stuff. He moves under those lifts so fast and so smoothly. It's legit, unlike any of the other men there. It is absolutely remarkable. So that was sort of like a big positive for me in this pairs event was like th the side by side jumps for both of them are very tricky, but I, I just thought, wow, what a beautiful, mm -hmm. like talent to partner this guy has. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I think to, for me, the biggest story of this event is that we have seen Mishan and Galyamov on a rise before this season. And we've seen other teams that have had COVID uh, more recently than they did. And they had uh, problems at the national championships a year ago. And they're kind of like the Ashley Wagner of nationals from like an Ashley <laughs> Wagner in an Olympic year type situation where they're getting that fourth place. And it's, it's interesting because they are so talented. I think most people would say that they are a team that is on the rise and in that mix. It, it, it's, it, it was an opportunity when people don't have the clean program to really judge who has the best quality of the elements, talking to someone before this, Yes, Taras and Morozov, when everyone has a couple mistakes, you could see their quality was top notch here. You know, last year, it's interesting to remember, but less nine months ago or so, Boykova and Kozlovsky were considered by many to be as likely to win the World Figure Skating Championships as Sui and Han, and perhaps more likely based on the consistency that they had displayed throughout the season and the way the marks were going and- And the side-by-sides for sure, which right, was so strong, especially this season. Clean program, clean program, clean program. Judges start to get in lockstep in their minds when a judge expects you to deliver a clean program of a certain level of quality and you deliver it again, the marks go up and up. And we saw that with Lignitskaya, the uh, Olympics uh, before Sochi. We've seen it happen so many times when you watch the marks rise from a clean, 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 that consistency. Mm -hmm. Juan in 1996, you look at those marks and just you think about like, it's so hard to stop that momentum. And they don't have that this year. You know, they, they've struggled again, having the COVID, I think 
of course, when you're expected to win an event and it's canceled, I, I imagine that it's really hard to ever replicate that the next year. It's kind of like that sophomore, not slump, but you know, it's just hard to keep that going and reach that next level. Let me see it with Kostranaya. Uh, but to look, it's it's they had you know hand down here this and that, and they just didn't have their same unison that they typically have. They, they looked rusty to me, and they were they were because we're talking about Boykova, right? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it was a bit um, a very strong, consistent team that was in survival mode. They mm -hmm. were hanging on, and and I thought at one second they might have almost done it, but um, I don't know because it's interesting this rivalry between the Moscovina team. And the main thing, they were holding on um, Boykova, but she was doing so in a calm manner, where I felt that like Mishin and Galyamov were so desperate for it, mm -hmm. that it, like, he, I thought, was about to fly right out of the arena. His center of gravity was like here. Mm -hmm. He was so, and often like chasing up to her in the beginning to keep, up, like there was a, cha a chaotic desperation to doing well where I do admire that even though there were a lot of little slip ups that definitely added up, Boykova that just kind of stayed relatively calm about it while it was happening, if that yeah. makes any sense. Because I think Galyam Mishina and Galyamov almost have inherent better aesthetic on, on the ice. To Maybe agree. naturally given that's not yet been fulfilled. I think um, Boykova and Kardoski have limitations but they're doing so much with what they have i mean they're both teams that have to go clean i mean at the pair in the pair competition at any they people tend to skate well since we've gotten rid of the quads people tend to go clean in the top 10 right and that's yeah very difficult it's unforgiving uh in that it's it's interesting to me that um mishina galyamov doing you know the variation from esmeralda like that's what their sharp program is that's you know when the lady comes out with the tambourine and da da da, 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 da. I mean, that program has nothing to do with it. It's interesting because right. usually the Russians are so um, snooty about the ballet, unless it's in a Terry girl in a tutu, then she's very balletic no matter what. Very, very, very much so. <laughs> it's a beautiful face, it doesn't matter, right? Oh, exactly. like ballerina, like ballerina yeah. on ice, okay. right? It could yeah. be the hideous crossovers of Zgitova, but it's like, <laughs> like both joy, right? But she's in a big red tutu. Yeah, exactly. Okay, listen. Versus sleek red loveliness. <laughs> listen, invited to be in the National Ballet of Canada, Zgitova was not so much. Okay. Yeah, exactly, okay. <laughs> I'll test the virtue, okay. <laughs> but I, I have to say one of the interesting things was to remember that Hodikin was a pair. For a while, this pair has sort of like we drifted to the wayside for me. Uh, we were but there. I, I sat next to you. We were at Skate America oh, in Las yeah. Vegas. They did some sort of an ugly Tron program that was fun yeah. to forget. With the triple flips I, then as well. They remind me of the Tara and Danny of uh, Russia in terms of the quality of the elements, where it's just not beautiful. They have to go consistent. Except opposite here, because I think she can almost do no wrong in my book. And I'm not exactly sure what his deal is. I think they're, first off, and I hate to say something I like I love this. either one, actually, I have to say. Well, the, the outfit for him mm. is something sometimes we've talked about with other people, but like, it's rather unflattering and sort of does not present an Olympic level athlete is I guess just how I'll say that. But she comes through, does her job. He can't stop talking to her. Mm -hmm. He's like yammering the whole time before they skate. And she, I don't know, she has some nice qualities to her. Mm -hmm. um, it's its him that it's, it's hard for me to get around. But again, if, um, I don't want to mess her name up. Pamphilova and Rilov, Rilov, Pamphilova. Are you putting it on the fee or the low? The Filova, right? Pamphilova. Okay. I don't, I, look, I am no. There's probably an uh, argument for both. Yeah. And Rilov or Rilov. I'm sure people will tell us in the comments. Uh, I am. It's about the emphasis we know. So just highlight in caps which emphasis you want us to hit. But there, I'm telling you, there's, there's, there's a rhythm to these names that. You know, yeah. Pamphilova or Pamphilova. It's not usually the low. So. Okay. Okay. Um, but I the way he's wrong, so 
Mm -hmm. The way he throws her is just one of the most sensational things I've ever seen. And again, like a team like Pavlyuchenko and um, Rodigan, they have the triple flip, which makes them interesting. But other than that, I don't, I see this difficult for them to listen, stay in the mix. Listen, <laughs> Jonathan Byer, who else had side-by-side -side triple flips in the pairs? Just saying. Just Were saying. they ever going to give us above a bronze medal? No. Were they ever going to respect us more than do Hamill and Ranford? Yes. No. You don't think so? No. I think more than Megan and No, Megan. no, 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 no. Okay. They were going to get that do Hamill and Radford bronze if the stars aligned. Yeah. Why Carol took us out of the pair event and had a skate for gold, honey. They just... Those Russian judges were never going to respect us skating the other way. They were going to shit. It, it was the mirror, I think. They were going to call us weird. single skaters forever. They were going to say yeah. maybe Rudy was too small. We want a bigger boy. They were going to find every reason. That's why we had to go for the gold solo, OK? If we could have gotten two gold medals, we would have done it, OK? Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't realize they were flips, because we've heard so many of the Lutzes, but they were flips. Excuse it was the throw triple cell they always did, yeah. I have heard you disrespect me to talk about Tanya Harding so oh, well. many times. <laughs> well, how who's got times? the gold laughing Excuse all the me. way to the finish? Line. How many times did Christy skate a clean program or do sit like six or seven triple jumps compared to Tanya, okay? And how many excuses did Tanya have over the years? We were doing two events, we were tired, we were exhausted. Our coach was dying from HIV and we were out there delivering, Jonathan, okay? It's true, it's true. <laughs> Cry me a river, Tanya. <laughs> she has. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. But Tarasova Morozov here, here's the interesting thing, like... Evgenia Tarasova. Yeah, what did you think? What did you uh, think? Interesting. I thought that Drenkov was just amazing at this competition. Uh, for me- it, A rather obscene, accidental crotch thrust into the camera and the kiss and cry when he realized they won. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I think uh, they had some really interesting choreographic moments. And obviously mm -hmm. the lift with the one arm is so spectacular that they do. Uh, I find that they lack an emotion when they're doing Bolero, but look beautiful doing it and mm. that they really work to accent the different notes where they do the mini, you know, choreographic element. For me, for the Olympics, I think that they should bring back the piano concerto number two short. I don't think that they are such a memorable team that people would be like, we've seen this before, right? The war horse would help though, don't the you think? The war horses I think would help them in in maybe both programs. Maybe do the, the piano concerto number two is the free skate, right? But I, think I would much rather that and then do some beautiful like classical piano or something almost solo for their, um, yeah. their short. Because a while back when they like first, first on the scene, wasn't she like wearing a violin or like a treble clef or something? And they did. <laughs> Remember the Lionel Richie program? <laughs> So we know that we're headed in the right direction. We know that. It's a Russian war horse, okay? You just, you, listen, they could do like the first movement for the short program, the second movement for the free program. It could be progressive, oh my God, yes, a sequel. Right, but a different one, right? Phil Hirsch would love it, okay? I could see the article right now on, on like globe trotting and Phil Hirsch, you know? to see the first movement when Rachmaninoff wrote this. He could give us a history lesson on Rachmaninoff, right? And then he could talk about the about why he loves this pair so much. And in the short program, they did this. And then he could get his son, maybe he could do like, you know, could conduct a concert of it. Oh my God. I think that I see this whole thing happening. And we could talk- so to, Who we else has like, done that? Who else has done thematic short to long? Like, I think, I always think of like Dennis Ten with the artist and, both sets of programs. Has anyone uh, ever Elite done? And Deloro, do you not remember? They the were both Godfathers. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> Part one and two. Okay. 
he left out three for the exhibition. He he was a smart exactly. boy. Exactly. Yeah, just he Rocky. Yeah, kept it yeah. classy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, interesting to me though is will Mishin uh, and Galyamov um, keep the triple cell Euler triple cell? They can both do it, but it does show how difficult it is when you and to try to match a triple triple comp. Uh, Always a sequence no combination uh, with the Euler. With um, when you're doing that, I, I want to say triple half loop, triple triple Euler triple. Right? How difficult it is to synchronize and to not mess it up to do two edge jumps. Like for a pair to do edge jumps is really much more challenging. Obviously. Yes. Right. To have that. But it was interesting because he struggled. Like he he got his legs crossed, didn't even take off. Right for the short that was him. Then and she then did the same thing in the free. I, I know it was so funny. So I was so intently watching his feet as they went into it. And I was like, they nailed it. And then I looked up on the little thing and it said single sow cow. And I was like, oh gosh, I have to go back and watch her now. Cause I was so hoping he would do it, but then it was her. So, well, for the oiler, for the sow cow, you have to get that hit back. Okay. And the timing off. I mean, it shows why it's such a difficult. Right. Series. You know, <laughs> A combination to do. Um, but yeah, overall, the pair event, I'm more excited because we're going to see these pairs again because, you know, Russia is going to have their own quasi European championships. Unclear on the rules. Are we going to get like four entries per event? I would really like. Oh, that would be nice. Three? Why stop at three per country, right? I want to see the top four pairs in Russia battle it out. Yeah. I want to see Masvina play these two pairs against each other and bring them to new heights. I think that this, <laughs> look, so maybe around the world, other teams you know, will be preparing for next season. But I think in Russia, we are going to keep running, keep competing, and we are going to learn by doing, right? And I'm going to request that it's top five. I'm going to request that it's top five because I want Panfilova and Relov to, to be there. I, I, I really want to start obsessively analyzing this fair. <laughs> and for, the, for this event with the, if we're going to invent things, should there be an age, like, are we going to allow people that are eligible for the Olympics to be there next year? Because we have to decide, are we going to take Tutumisheva? or are we going to have her even angrier for next season? Because I have to tell you, her in the black dress with this music, it's very dark. And I would like to see a more joyful Lisa. I just, I miss her being more charismatic and up-tempo. And I just... Because it reminds me of confidence. And so when it's dark and like this like brooding quality, it doesn't have swagger. And she's best with swagger. Yeah, Her own skating works cleanest and most efficiently when she feels that confidence swagger. I Understandably purple, didn't have it here. A purple or navy blue moo, -moo from her bring it back okay bring back the classics for next season i'm just not into this uh, she theme. won her nationals in like 2013. i mean this she has defied all things we thought about russian do you know what i mean she is like su has such longevity and i know now she was ill also after Ross telecom is that correct yeah so i mean she's really been um taken out by the knees by Tanya Harding, by this coronavirus. Uh, you think about it, anytime she starts getting that quad back, anytime she's getting that triple axle back, something has happened, right? Uh, yeah. The pandemic, uh, uh, Taraz of a politics. Pneumonia the other year. Like, yeah. you know, this whole. Yeah. And she, and I don't, I don't rise say this. Again. She will rise again, but it will. She has risen so many times. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was just like two weeks ago, she was having like, such a surreal moment by winning Ross Telecom. Yes. Of course, although we had a feeling it was because everything just lined up just so, but. Matter. Um, and unfortunately, I sort of had a feeling this was coming. Mm -hmm. But. It almost withdrew. So yeah. it, it was talked about. Would you have? I mean, but talk about PTSD from withdrawing. I think that's what really. You know, Lisa can't her. get a break with Russian nationals. I know. Drew, they didn't send her to Worlds. She goes out and does it, but then she's- Even though she had been bronze, I think, at the Grand Prix final that year. Like she had a very strong case. I say this looking at it as an overall competition and not as a fan of any particular right. girl. In a non-sentimental opinion. When you look at the way that things are going, 
the trajectory, looking at a year from now, getting ready for Beijing, it is going to be so challenging for anyone to really compete with about the top four here. Yeah. Thinking about what it would take. Honest, if you're being really honest. And that, but I, I think to Demetra, it would take quads, but it would take good spins, faster skating. Does she have it in her? I don't know, right? Like, I think it would take two quads and two uh, triple axles. And is it possible? I know. It's that a big we, ask, obvious. Of course, it's a big ask. Uh, I mean, the youth is the tough thing. Medvedeva sitting there in the stands. I don't know about you, but I kept thinking, will she compete at a Russian Nationals next year or will we see another exhibition performance? I, I say go for the exhibition. We saw the exhibition. I tonight. think she will try, right? I think that she will, as, at least as a See, I didn't know, because, and she was doing her, the good work and promoting team Chuburitsa on the mask there. I just wonder if a Terry would tolerate it. Given that she has so many other like high level contenders and she knew when it was time for Medvedev to say goodbye and it was so much longer than... I don't think they'll put her out there to be in 18th place. I'll put well, it... That's what I mean, yeah. But I don't think that Medvedev would let herself, like... There'd be some sort of theatrics that will happen, right? I mean, if she's not lined up to do well, something will happen next season, mm. right? And I think... I just... I think for her that she wants to try she did do um, the triple South. I remember she, she gave a dramatic interview where she was seen practicing the Alegria program. And she said, I hope that I can do at least one jump in the exhibition. So she did attempt one jump. She did land a triple South cow, but it was not the Alegria program that we saw her practicing. It was a different program. I felt a little bit cheated. I was ready for the cartwheel. I wanted to know how the <laughs> were gonna react to a potentially redone, where they gonna love the program now that she's back with the Terry because they all trashed it before. You know how our Russians can be. I was so ready for it. I don't know, what are they gonna do? Right, know, but it's a tough, it's, and again, but the, I'm telling you, my heart doesn't break for her as much as it breaks for Chuchimishiva, and that is just a sentimental feel. I don't understand It is why. not about There's, the skate. Why not? Here's a girl who was second place at the Olympics by this much, and you never know if you're going to get that second chance, and she has certainly tried to get that second chance. So I don't understand why you would be sentimental for Chuchimishiva and not for... Medvedev. Because Chuchimishiva never got close that way. I guess, and because I felt like Medvedeva had yeah, but, a beautiful we don't know. punctuation we don't know mark with that bronze. We don't know all the different factors that went into it, yeah. right? They've both had advantages and disadvantages and things happen. And someone has been helped by the judges this time and not this time. I, I mean, I don't think that one is a villain and one is, you know, like- some, Yeah, totally. I think that they've both, I think I feel for both of them, like it's very clear that consistently it's hard to compete against youth in right. this respect. And who's on top this year, next year, not so much. I do think it's amazing that Anna has lasted three in a row in this era of skating. You know, people were talking about, you know, how many in a row Butcherskaya has or Slutskaya. But you think like in this era of mathematic skating, that's very unforgiving if you make any sort of error and with the way nationals are judged, it's very hard year after year after year. So I do- And like you said, all four of these top place finishers could have walked away with a world medal at any point. Mm -hmm. But that was definitely not the case when Maria Buterskaya or Slutskaya were skating. The depth, I, I mean, for Elisaveta to have had a close triple axel attempt and then a fall on the other triple axel attempt and be eighth, or she was so low in the free itself, but yet still, I mean, I don't know. I think the depth there is insane. It, I have to at least give it that. I do think Daria Usashova there's something about her. She reminds me of Ali Raisman in a sense, and I want to discuss that nothing in terms of their actual performance ability, right? It's in a consistent, gritty approach, getting better. When we first saw Ali Raisman as a young gymnast, she was like kind of talented, but over rotating things and not always the most talented, but she stuck with it. 
and worked hard and like gradually got better to where she clawed. And then you'd be like, wow, she's so powerful. But a lot of that was hard work to build that ability up over time. And I think watching Daria a year ago, a year and a half ago, she was so far behind Volieva. And she was like the next one to watch, but then she was a really inconsistent competitor. And she was so far behind the other girls, but she's just kind of like worked on everything step by step by step by step by step. To be fourth here, I thought was huge for her with two good performances. Um, seemed like Terry was very invested in her. We know that she's training a triple axle. If she can have a triple axle for next year, I don't see why she couldn't go to the Olympics. Looking because at again, the right now, the triple axel is, can be a secret weapon against those quads because even with the turnout in Chukchamisheva's short program, she still got the highest point of anyone for that element. So mm -hmm. even a botched triple axel, Valieva, I mean, I don't know, I think it could put you in good stead if you're able to include it in the short program. Like it may make her, because right now, I think Daria has beautiful, pictures she's creating on the ice. I think she moves very elegantly. I just, without one of those wow elements, it's going to be hard for her to move forward, but a triple axel may even move her farther. I, I think, think that she has three triple axles in her competitive programs next year. That's a massive point, point <laughs> difference. And we, so. that, that would be a huge ask for anyone that's not on Team 2 Burrito where like, that starts to happen, right? Where that becomes <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know, it, and it's not, so, okay. Then you look at Trusova and you're like, okay, to get to the Olympics next year, I do think she will need a triple axel in the short program. So judged. talk this out with me. How did you feel like she was judged here? Um, that's such a difficult academic. Yes, question. and I'm I, intending it to be as such. And I, I, was, mean... I was texted by someone who I respect, um, who, likes her and I said to you like I really can't answer that question that would take a whole like eight episode series of breaking down because her components she's trying to improve tried to improve they made better music choices and she has completely forgotten what she was working with um, Ilyanik on earlier in the season. Even from the opening movements of the Romeo and Juliet, she does like a head turn or there's something, something that gets her going this way. And it was so approximated and small and quick. And I was like, oh, she's not in, she's not in ice dance mode at the moment. <laughs> Has her glide improved? Absolutely. From last year to this year, I mean, yeah. From whence it's come, yeah. But, and has her technique improved on the quad less? Yes, and it took all year to get here. Right. Huge jump, huge combination that we saw here. But is the consistency there? I mean, she had an injury. Can she, she's gonna need the quad toes back. I still think for her to make the Olympics, she'll be coming from behind. There will be talk of was she robbed? Was she not robbed? I think what's clear is that when she was on Team Tutberitza, the judges were willing to overlook her skating in a way that they are not currently. But is Plushenko managing her better? At the moment, I would say yes. Her body is completely different than it was a year ago. And now she's still jumping big quad lutzes. So, and when we saw certain toes and sows to varying degrees of success, but when they were happening earlier in the season, I, I see big technical changes happening. Yeah. Also, I have never bought the argument that because she was not, because the Terry didn't want her to do maybe five or six quads at the world championships, that, that means that she wasn't a favorite because could she do them consistently? I seem to remember her being like three for five for the quads at most competitions last year. Right. So I, I think- It was a strategy where if you try so many, you're bound to get enough. She was that trying your score will be up. hard last year, but she wasn't skating well. And I get that they wanted, they just thought that adding more was the answer, but maybe being consistent was the answer, but maybe they felt that she couldn't get the components of so doing more. But ultimately it was like, but you're not landing them all. 
right? And there right. seems to be a thing about consistency <laughs> with teams with breeds like what you look for. And I just think that, look, any champion to an extent is hard headed, it's why they're good, but it can also work against you. And I think for her, I think she can be very aggressive hmm. and stubborn. But I think last year it was maybe working against, and there are always, there are rumors every two weeks that this girl is, that the, that not her, but that her dad is looking for a new coach. Looking back for Raphael, going back to a Terry, did this. But I think when you look at how she's doing with Bushenka, she is improving. The skating skills have improved and the jumps have gotten bigger and more leggy. The, her quads mean a bit more to me right now. Whereas before when she was throwing out all these little quick twisty ones, they, they didn't land with me. <laughs> like I, I just was unimpressed. And now I'm getting more actually from all three of these top girls here, when they did their quads here this time, they just kind of mattered a little bit more. If she can do two good skates at the fake Europeans that we're going to see in Russia and be in the top two there, I think the Russian Federation will start to come around on her. Yeah. I think that we'll start to see more enthusiasm, especially if she can add another, if she can add a great quad toe in, but she has to skate well. She can't add too many quads and then lose the consistency. And that's been her, yeah. a problem with her over the last couple of seasons because Volieva may only give you two quads, but they're going to be landed ducks. They were right? big, beautiful quad toes, those quad toes. And the beauty of a clean program with nice music, it just, it still wins the day in skating most times, that strategy. So I, I, I don't think, Vol I mean, we don't see Volieva go for the triple axel in the free skate, right? I mean, I think if we were just trying these elements, in both programs. I, I really think that Terry looks at this as, okay, you have this many elements in the free, you have this many elements in the short, we're gonna do it one time and and play our bets that way. And it's a strategy. Yeah, I know, having not been at a competitive skating level where I'm throwing out quads and triple axles, I would think as a competitor, I would, if I'm trying a triple axle in the short, I want to be trying it in the long. Well, yeah, you because then every day in practice, you're also- It's twice practicing. as much. It becomes that much more. So it's fascinating this. And they were doing it with Trusa for a while too, I think last season where she was trying the Axel in the short only. And it just feels like an afterthought kind of. Yeah, I, I would just be so consistent about wanting the same thing in all of them. Her Axel is not ready. I mean, it's a 50% it, it, right. fall in the free program based on that entrance edge that she has. So. She needs it for next year. She's gonna, yeah. It's going to take everything she has to make it. Now, you, you'll remember this. Did she have issues with her edge on the flip last season as well that they were calling her out on? Because that's where they really buried her in the short here, Trusova. They really nailed her on the flip. You really have to prepare me for this competition. I, yes, I'm I, sorry, Jay. But you know how sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, she always has that edge issue. But like that's, they took that window of opportunity to bury her in the short a little bit, I felt. I'm trying to remember what her short program was last year. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm trying to like see it in my head. Uh, yeah, I know, it, but that tells you something, doesn't it? But I just in wish, one of I the competitions last year, she had like a metallic -y, like cobalt blue skirt that also had pants with it. That was rather. And nice. I still remember the Kill Bill, but that was probably from when she was a junior, two years ago. Yeah. They were blending together. Um, <laughs> I have to like see it in my head. Um, we'll get back to that. I don't look. <laughs> Sherbakova changes as John Herlot, so they don't call it. So let's. Well, that's sort of. There, there was this one skater, and it was Trusova that was really getting nailed on that flip edge. So look, it's the rumor a was that when a Terry took Medvedeva back, that they were told that your skaters will get this, like, will be helped. Whether that was said explicitly or. You yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it certainly has seemed as much, but she's also delivered. So, right. uh, but they have helped it along. Look, her sponsor is like a Putin backed company. Okay. I guess from speaking of Putin and companies. Okay. So we obviously saw all this ice cream again. Mm -hmm. All of that, now that all of our viewers no, let us have ice cream in front of the girls when they can't be eating it. Like, no kidding. especially like in a mountain that they're yes. like hiding behind almost. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. 
crazy. But now we know it's ice cream. And I did do um, a little investigation, found an article that that company created a rainbow colored ice cream thing that was very controversial because Putin thought it was a little like gay propaganda. And it was an interesting know, tidbit of, about it. It's so funny the concept of gayness in Russia. You know, Galena's propaganda always through colorful ice cream. <laughs> Galena like, is always asking me if I'm attracted to this coach Anya on the ice. Does she it's want you like, to be straight? No, like she's asking me like, yes, Anya, very beautiful girl. Are you like distracted? And then there was another girl. She was like, yes, David, men like it her, right? And I was like. Sure, I don't know. Like, I was like Kalina, like you coach Johnny, right? Like. <laughs> like we, we understand each other here. Yes, no. I was like, what hasn't Nina or Victor like explained? <laughs> her about you know you don't argue, there, you don't so argue with Galena sometimes I just have to tell you that like sometimes like especially if you're talking to her over the phone when there's a language barrier you just have to let it go okay yeah it's not worth it sometimes I would think yeah okay I called her saw how her Christmas was yesterday like the whole thing right because I was coming back from skating and so I usually like we'll check in right anyway I was like why wasn't Tarasova at Russian nationals. I said, I, was she sick or did something happen? Like, cause, and apparently like it might be a back problem that Tarasova had while she wasn't there. And I was like, why wasn't her? Dev, it is so far. Shabalinsk, you know, it's like going to California, you know, in Russia, mm. like Euro mountains, it divides, you know, Europe from Asia. And I mean- Yes, we're familiar. <laughs> about there are trees and what are they called beautiful nuts you have like pine nuts like what are you talking about? no not a clue okay like given like a whole history she had not a freaking clue why Tarasville wasn't there but she was saying that with COVID and it's too far and it's dangerous but I'm like I don't think the Russians like really believe in COVID like what, I mean look at how right like, exactly I think yeah. the Russian skaters are going to like show us what happens when you get COVID twice or if it's really possible like right know, trust me I think that I think that this Russian team will achieve all of that, right? Okay. No, she was giving a history lesson. And then I texted someone else, like, why wasn't Tarasco there? She's like, her back. I was like, okay. Thank you. <laughs> but then I'm like, why couldn't they zoom her in, right? We have exactly drinking wine days after his wedding to his new wife. He's like there at the nationals, not even on a honeymoon. You know, this is. Oh, that's where they're like, honeymooning. They let yeah. Yagudin talk on his own without an editor. I was like, wow, okay. Like, no babysitter. Maybe that's what Albert Book was doing, but should Albert Book be babysitting when he's like coming up with all these Holocaust programs? I don't know if he's the one. But right. anyway. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He was having juicy juice on the air. I, I don't know what he was drinking in that wine glass, but it all starts. <laughs> I love Russian so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, you know, I, d I don't know. I don't, it was like, anyway, she was just like in a mood yesterday. She was just saying that like, I was like, oh, the other thing that really got me, I was so confused was I was trying to ask her yesterday if she watched the ladies. I wanted to see if she, what she thought. Of course, I would always love to hear her opinion on stuff. She was like, no, Dave. Nina left my house last night, you know, Vika leaving tonight. And you know, in Russia, it's, you know, it's like um, bad superstition. Like on holiday, you are not supposed to work. And I was like, okay, I don't think watching skating is working. And I asked you if you watch it today. And like, she was, she was cleaning her house. Okay, she was cleaning her house yesterday. And that's what you need to know. Okay. <laughs> you freaking never know with like what but she's gonna have like an impassioned like opinion like somehow it was because she on christmas went like she just went between refrigerator and sofa refrigerator and sofa Same. And just, <laughs> nina vika we make uh, they make it uh, not normal food like uh, like french food like different ingredients and like uh, herbs and we cooking for like five and a half hours. It was so, so good, so good. And we make it mashed potato and I make it cake and we just go back and I was like, okay, did you watch the ladies? Like, yeah, so that's a no then. <laughs> 
you'll get back to me. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's like Trooper Reads a Cried on TV. Like, you know Galena's reaction to that is gonna be like so great because. Although when I think of Galena, and I, I don't know exactly what word she's saying. All I think of is Lilla Hammer. When she's standing or when she's sitting with Oksana and she goes, I think she's saying she fast. It sounded- first. She she first. Oh, is she saying first? Yes. Sorry, I misunderstood. I didn't know if it was a- Nancy like, she, second. I remember Nancy second. I remember her saying that and like she was doing this and that's I forever how I will remember her. She in the gold and black cardigan. Fairy. Yeah. Okay. She what? She loves to win. Who wouldn't? I believe she says something about Oksana's mother when she gets off the ice. And then, so that part of that whole like weird thing in A Promise Kept, like maybe sort of based on reality, yet like so not how the conversation happened. And then she tells her to stop crying. Wait, so what's A Promise Kept? Tell me. There is a TV film about Oksana Bayul where she comes out at the very end and she skates a, um, a beautiful, like sw her swan-like short program that she skates, but that's the only time you see the real Oksana, but it, it tells the story. It was a CBS TV movie that was aired like the next fall and they advertised it during Ice Wars. And, you know, they'll have like, the actress says like three Russian words in the entire movie and it's like, you know, like it's like the whole <laughs> And they probably like, spent an hour on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a sweet grandmother type. You know, that's just reminding her of That's how they chose to play it. Yeah. Okay. And then it says like story consultant, Galina Smyevskaya. And you're like, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. Yeah, this is okay. Like, mm hmm Oh my God. You've it's 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 a terrible film. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go look at it. I tried to ask Alina about it one Jib. We must forget about this movie. I forget about it. I take check and forget. Okay, I was, <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. We've all been there, yeah. <laughs> it is very much based on a true story. I think you get more realism in the Nadia film where she's drinking bleach or in, um, I, Maybe the Thai Babylonia TV movie has more drama to it. I don't think that this is um, the real one. I think that Mr. Feeney portrayed John Nix far more accurately than um, these people portrayed Russian figure skating. But um, anyway, okay. it was, um, it's a, a movie that one should see maybe one time. And- Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then forget gotcha. it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Amazing. No, the best Galena's kiss and cry is when Victor gets the six and they laugh about it. Their reaction is so hilarious. But the funny thing about that is that he had an undefeated season before those Olympics. And because we were so uh, like jazzed for, you know, Car Browning against Boitano and like we forget that he was probably the favorite going in. With right. Elvis. 100%. And everything. Yeah. Anyway. And beat because he was fourth, right? In Little Hammer? Yeah, yeah, because of the short program. And he got rushed to the ice far worse than Jose Schwinnard, the guy's the guy, like Victor said in an interview, you know, the guy's blade like fell apart and he was, you know, like rushed and very upset about this whole thing. Yeah. Hmm. It's okay. He's performing at the Mega Sport Arena with Tatiana Novka this weekend. He's doing very He's well. doing fine. He's doing fine. He's doing it turns fine. Out. Yeah. It's very nice. We have a you know, we have a running joke that he came up with when I was like skating. You know, he was like, get out of the way. The Olympic champion is coming. The rival of Han Yu, he goes, right? So now <laughs> we have a running joke. And I was like, I sent him Han Yu's video and I said, Han Yu looks good. And he was like, I said, my rival looks good. And he was like, yes, but we have more time for the Olympics. Don't worry. You know? <laughs> Amazing. We yeah. can do this. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. That's funny. Um, that was kind of it on the ladies, yeah? Because I feel like we touched... I do have to say, I watched... Um... Nugumano. Shoot, let me look at... Yes! Some really nice uh, moments here and there. Not, not totally always happening, but especially in the short program, I was like, I don't know, this is, this is a skater I definitely enjoy watching. Yes. Yeah. She and Valdegeva, again, I just don't think 
Bolero has anything to do with what's happening on the ice. I actually did an experiment with myself where she started the free skate and I muted it. And I enjoyed it so much more. Because you even think that opening when she's doing these kinds of abrasive, it's very interesting what she's doing, this kind of puzzle she's putting herself in. But instead of this like, dum, da, 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 she's like whipping it around. It's, and then I tried to imagine the music that belongs with that movement. And it's interesting, but it's totally different than Bolero. You know what I mean? You know what's also interesting? Her free leg kick, that extension. Hmm? How many times Ted says things that have nothing to do with us on camera? And Jonathan, I know you're gonna thank him for the fact that he got a camera for the Junior Grand Prix, which the ISU should have known to do anyway for the goodness bingo, of the Bingo, bingo. At what time are we done thanking him for that? <laughs> when have we thanked him enough? Thank Canada. Thank you, Canada. Stanford, As Martin. Said, even Tessa Virtue stopped thanking Canada at some point, right? <laughs> All right. How about Sherbakova is like maybe going to pass out? The girl had smelling salts before the short program, right? And he was like, and she is joyous. The girl looked like she was gasping for air, trying not to die. And he's talking about yeah. how proud her parents are and how she's a joyous She's joyous after she, you know. Yeah, I bet you she's loopy on poppers skating to the middle of the ring. <laughs> first of all, first of all, Danny G is like so angry. He was being such a DB. He was too much, too in much. In program, he is becoming like. A caricature. An odious character, a caricature yeah. during this competition. Okay, she misses two levels on a camel spin. Look, the girl is like, uh, can't even breathe, you know, in the, in, and he's just behaving like. And it's performative. That's not a yeah. oh, shit. That was a big look at me because I know I'm in the bottom screen. As if she's not like a great student, right? Right. Oh, come on. Look at how. how and that's the message it sends quite honestly. Yeah. The message he sends is that he thinks she's an idiot in that moment. And he thinks he's so great. Well, what has he yeah. done? Choreographed uh, Bolero this? or Camila Bolero? Like, right? I'm Taken one of the most beautiful skaters skating right now and made her look less beautiful. Like, is that what you want a prize for? Yeah. Um, anyway, it just. Yeah. Oh, but Crazy. Ted, Ted. Like, someone will like do a clearly under rotated thing and he'll be like, all the way around. <laughs> No, like what? depends on who he wasn't doing Drusiva any favors. He was stone cold silent for so long after he she skated. And then I think, you know, you were one of the first people that introduced me to the idea that the Scott Sandra response in Salt Lake City fed that feeling. And it didn't even dawn on me. And I think Ted did it here. He was pretty quiet after Drusiva exploded after Valieva, exploded after Sherbakova, exploded after Usachova. It was so, I know he plots it's for- It's the same thing of the election. The fact that we knew that yes, it was explained that it was said, we won't know all the votes ahead of time, right? We won't have all the votes in. But the thing that Trump knew and they knew ahead of time was that when it immediately, the state looks red and then it switches to blue, even though we know in our minds that there are more ballots coming instead of just not assigning a color when you initially see, and then it switches, it feels wrong. Like why- It feels like a change, yeah, yeah. It feels like a change that seems suspect, right? When you originally learn something one way and then it flips. So he knows when he reacts in a certain way to a skater, it is hard to undo that. Yeah, and I, he did it 100%. For a truce a thousand percent. He will say that something is around. He will say something is on the correct edge. He is lying through his teeth and he's doing it under the guise of being a nice Canadian, but it's not authentic. Like he is playing- Because it's neither, nor is it consistent. He's a game for himself. And you know what? He is like the beloved voice of skating now. Of the Terry skaters, yeah. Mm, honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was interesting, even one of the judges, I was looking at a lot of the protocols and, um, Someone put Usachova above Trusova. There was definitely this anti trusova sentiment has remained. I like Plushenko. There's an argument for it. Do you know what's interesting? He is like known for being so arrogant and so over the top and so performative himself. 
And yet when you see him at the boards next to a Danny G, he looks sober. He yes. looks level-headed. He looks like he's like, a, like yeah. oh, the fans are insane. There was a picture of six girls, right? Three of them were a Terry. One of them were, was uh, choose of a two were like girls we don't even care about. So I tagged it, Team Tuparitza, Angels of Plushenko. And they were like, you are on the payroll for Angels of Plushenko. Like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I love, Dave. Dave, can I be honest? I hate when people say that because I was like, I would love to see some of that money. I'm happy to be on the payroll for Angels of Plushenko. Please send me a check. Like, I'll say it. What do you want me to say? <laughs> no one is sending us checks, my if friends. I start taking videos. Power washing my Porsche outside, <laughs> changing a designer outfit. You are allowed to call shit. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve, I shared one freaking picture and was like, oh, I don't even know who the other girls are, nor do I give a shit. Okay? Right. Like, yeah, exactly. They, they keep trying to make this Samadelkin a girl happen. I was like, she fell on two quads at the last competition. And doesn't yeah, that was that. tough. Yeah, exactly. The same thing, like, Again, and we mention it every time, Maya Chromic's like very far from ready quad. She had the situation. performance of her life, this competition, okay. And still the quad was nowhere, anywhere near. And she switched quads from this. She I don't think the type from... of quad was the issue. It's been sow to the toe axle. I mean, she's still like going out the garage. Look, she worked her tail off. She had way better than I ever thought she was gonna perform here. So mm -hmm. back to mm -hmm. her. Exactly. Uh, does she have the natural ability? No. Um, but I have to say, how do you think Kosternaya would have done here? Based on her lack of preparation this season, I, don't, I think she's gonna, like, will we see her next year and how hard will she have to work? I think it would have been a bigger scandal for everyone involved because she might've been the one that bumped Trusova off the podium mm -hmm. with two clean quad lutzes or mm -hmm. however they call it. You know what I mean? Um, I think that would have been- She tough. withdrew from, because of COVID, but then we also saw her shopping. So like, what is going on there? Like, are we having a push? Well, did like, she feel like she was well enough, but just not trained again? Had look, she fallen out of training? twice that we could see. I mean, when I have, you know, bedridden with pneumonia, I'm not like- Yeah. Going shopping with my coach. Like, that's not something that like- Because was the argument, was her statement that she was actively having it? Or- look, I believe that she had she COVID. I a thousand percent- Recovering and didn't have enough time to get back up. It just seems like there's a lot of drama in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Which is what we love about her. But at the same time, I think. Because she represented such a beacon of hope. And I think sea her of... peak season will always be the world that didn't happen. But I do think we'll see her one more time with like. At peak. Yes. Yeah. But I, I think she'll get there. I don't know when it will be, but I think she she will pull tough. out all the stops again. Yeah. It will be tough, but I think that she will come guns blazing for the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. Whether it's a Sean Johnson and Nastia come back, I don't know, but I think it'll be theatrical. Okay. Because quite frankly, I think you could have sat this one out like she did and still be okay for next year. And you know what? Igor Mukana needs to have more of a sense of humor about him. Okay. Yesterday, I was just trying to, you know, we work on my brackets and my rocker. I said, Igor, I just want to have a moment in my program that's a lot like Coaster and I, when she's like, you can see me in the crown when she does that, like, change of edge, like, right in front of the judges. And he's like, Dave, how old is this girl? To have such a moment, it is, you know, not an adult person. I was like, whatever. It's theatrical. This is why oh, that's life. where you draw the line? Is that bracket? Like, come on now. <laughs> Whatever. I was like, come on, it needs to happen in my program. <laughs> come on, people. Give me that moment. <laughs> Dave, I don't know. We're like, whatever. <laughs> so serious. So serious. We had a, there were, okay, yesterday we have our adult class and because, you know, adult skater Laura was like in Florida visiting her dad or whatever, you know, like she had to quarantine and take tests and the whole thing. So there was like another skater on the ice because there are only so many skaters allowed right now. And there was like an adult boy very aggressively like training his jumps and trying to work on like double sow cow drills. And I was like, first of all, getting competitive, like who the hell is that? And then I was like, who is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Igor, you need to be like friendly, be like, 
hello, my name is Igor. You want to take my class? Like, you know, like, why don't you try? Like, you could skate. Dude, I, I just, this boy, he look at me like I'm crazy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, he's so, so, so shy. So shy, you know. Yeah. Why am I teaching Igor how to be friendly? You know, like, with what people say about me. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not shy, not shy. <laughs> I can be shy. No, no, no. Jen Krakowski yeah. at the Ice House was, went in the whole thing analyzing my personality. She was like, you're somewhat reserved. And then around, like, she's like, it depends. She's like. Because would you say that this is a persona? No. I don't think it's a persona. No. But I think it's a version. Yes. It's yeah. an aspect of a person. I know other versions of you as well. Do you yes. know what I mean? That's not this version. But I, I mean. Yeah, so I mean, it's not like you're you're at max all the time. No. Yeah, to your lord. <laughs> that's what she was coming yeah. up anyway. Okay, she, interesting. It was, it was just funny. It was uh, just as she has different parts of her personality. She can be the hardest, and then she's like holiday magic. She's decorating, bringing in like gifts for the kids. You know, at the ice rink. Like you know, so she's funny. not just. She's not all hard all the time, yelling at okay. me. Okay. You know? <laughs> Although you inspired me, I want to figure out where um, your Galena ornaments and Victor ornaments, where and the Lautua ornaments were made. Like if I, that was a company. Girl, she made them. Yeah, I would love to, because are you kidding? The endless creative possibilities there. If Because I thought sometimes when you get personalized Christmas ornaments, they look at, you know, they have a, a quaint quality to them, but these looked like, nice high-end ornaments that just happen to have fun faces on them. She's a high-end girl. Look, she she spends all that money on her furniture for her house, okay? She I'm listening, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she may be the queen of the ice house, but that house is like restoration hardware, okay? And amazing, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was really- There were two like, other disciplines here, men, um, men and dance. The angel boy. So, okay, I, I want to ask you this, and I, an answer Google search could have done this. What is the movie they're talking about that this soundtrack is from? I heard that this is an array of story. Yes. And then, and then they, were they were, Ted was saying it was from a certain movie? This is why I watched the Russian commentary. You know, as people say about Latin mass, it's much nicer when you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Feels authentic and old fashioned. It's no, from it's the movie The White Disco. Crow. It's The White Crow that came and out. And is The White Crow a movie about Nerea? The White Crow is a 2018 biographical film written by David Hare and directed by Ralph Fiennes. It chronicles mm. the life and dance career of ballet dancer Rudolf Nureyev, played by Oleg Evenko. It was inspired I by wanna see it. Rudolf Nureyev, The Life by Julie Kavanaugh. The title is a reference to the child's and Boddicker of White Crow with a somewhat similar meaning to Black Sheep in English because he was unusual. Principle of Turnery was completed. Unusual. Oh. That we know what they mean by that. Yeah. Okay. I am so yes. We should watch this. The right. Yeah, I would love to. I'm a big Nerea fan ever since I saw him as a kid on the Muppet Show, <laughs> doing Swine Lake with Miss Piggy. Listen, I'm a fan. Okay. <gasps> Dave, they sing "Baby It's Cold Outside" in a steam room. <gasps> Nerea and Miss Piggy, and she's the aggressor. There Miss you go. That beats your Lauren McCall. I need you to watch Miss Piggy and How Nerea. Are you on an old classic, okay? Amazing, please go watch the thing. <laughs> on Christmas Eve, there's like nothing I wanna do more than go back and just go to an inn that's only open on holidays, okay? <laughs> Why does that only exist in old movies, okay? Uh, and yet it's so posh and suddenly like so sophisticated and everybody's there and it's a totally amazing small town all of a sudden. What I'm do they like, do the rest of the year? Okay. Right. Is that just summer folks? I don't think so. <laughs> the Russians have movies like this. I don't know if they would get a joy. I don't I don't know if they understand that emotion. Like Well, I finally watched it. I feel like Igor Lukanin would be watching it and being like, Jonathan, what do you mean? In only open on holiday. It makes no sense. <laughs> Why we watch? Igor, it's a vehicle to watch them dance. Oh. It's an emotional thing. Okay. You know, like. Oh, yes, yes, okay, yes. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Oh, okay. 
for a fit, come on, for an ice dance coach, like. Come on, they don't get it, okay? That's fine. So, is he not the bit, is he not an angel boy? He is the king, right? It's just sensational. And it was interesting because they've decided, it seems like they get that they're loving this program. All mm. of Russia gets it when they're doing it. Like, this is one of the most beautiful programs I, I think I've ever seen choreograph for a male like this. Like, it's so beautiful. It's so real. And they show Averbuka in the little screen. I know. When he was like, he needs to go bigger here. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't take any advice from Averbuka about choreography. Okay. Exactly. He was this like, is my bigger, bigger on this moment. Remember, he came to Professor Mishin. Like, he had a family emergency, had to leave the camp. <laughs> so, right? Did he have the program already? <laughs> like, what is the... Right. Did Mishin choreograph the short program? Like, we don't know. He only needs a new short program for next year. Right, I agree with you. I believe that we need, like, Elena Tchaikovskaya to approve any program he does, and that maybe we could have, like, a conversation that the short program is not appropriate and that he needs a Russian war horse classic for the short and to keep the long, okay? We cannot yes. let Mishin have anything to do with He does not need a new program. He needs to put the quad lots into this program. Mishin, do what you're doing. It's working. The, techni the technical side of things is, is really going well. Only so you just program. keep it up. Only program I have ever liked from Mishin Skater. Only program ever. For, like really genuinely thought was of quality. That was like a full Mishin student. You know what I mean? Yeah, because of course I mean, Carolina there's... doesn't count. I appreciate like an ironic love of when maybe uh, Plushenka was in like the Silver Lame <laughs> in the Nagano season, do you remember? Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, don't. Yikes. Yeah, but I think they know that this is part of the magic and that they can achieve both at the same time. So I'm excited to see where this goes. It's just so beautiful. Even the opening noticing of what's in the air and then coming back to the final catch it. That's a note for Danny G, who thinks he's being so um, forward thinking with his bookends. Look at the way Kolyada bookends this program mm. with that opening, like what is that moment that emotionally grabs you, which the, the females for all of their amazing technical ability and their great extension and all this sort of stuff, fail to connect with me emotionally. Kolyada, can I connect with emotionally from the beginning of this piece. This Beyond beautiful, the, the women are beautiful, their movements, but this is an emotional time. You know who needs to do a short program? Stefan Lambiel, and we will get into it tomorrow with that program that he did for Satya yes, Kara. Yes, we will. He Wait, hold on, excuse me while I like, fall out of my chair. It was so amazing. God, like- <laughs> That's oh tomorrow, my... that's tomorrow. He's gonna get all the love tomorrow. <laughs> all the love, okay? Yeah. He needs to be doing- the, but the, More. He, Maybe he can't because of Shoma Uno, but I mean, how are we going to... I know. An embarrassment of riches ahead for us. But, you know, Lambiel has had a good relationship with Professor Mishin in the past. You know, maybe we could have some sort of a collaboration. He could help with Rika Kihira, and then we could, like, let Lambiel choreograph for Koyada, like, you know. Yeah. And I don't think... It, you know what I was thinking, Jonathan? What were you thinking, Dave? You mispronounced Panfilova earlier. People cannot yell because these same fans, are they yelling at Ted about his pronunciation of anyone? His is, his is outrageous, especially when in juxtaposition with the announcer. The announcer gives it right there for you. She said, Usachova, Usachova, Daria Usachova, a hundred times. And you hear him because I know this from singing. I would do it myself. When you get to that part of like an opera that you forgot to prepare, you're like, shit, what word? How do you say that word? And you kind of, really fast he would do it he pronounced Usachova 10 different ways throughout one broadcast none of them correct but it's okay because he's positive so they love him they think of him as the nice idiot let's and you think really honest, you so. think of how much we gotta hustle to get ready for one of these things we're watching everything we're reading everything he has people like handing him stuff, like yeah. hand him a pronunciation Terry, guide. Your give na dudbridza is like say these nice things about my skaters and he'll underline like, the damn syllable in Usachova. He doesn't know? even say a Terry's name right, and she's paying his bills, honey. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I think it would be an easy fix if someone chose to help. Does he have a mask with a G on it? Because I would love one. Okay, if that, <laughs> it's a gangsta. Okay, like that. Hey, no, I thought it would say Danny. 
G. It have a G <laughs> with a dollar sign through the middle. Okay. It or almost looks like. Oh. <laughs> and then some right. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Let me tell it you. It almost looked like a Gatorade G, didn't it? I, I, but you said it was something else. It's Gazprom. It's uh, the company. It's a petroleum company. So we need to have a word <laughs> with Nikolai Morozov. You know what? Your lifestyle, your women, we overlook a lot. We don't talk about, okay? You're very talented, all right? How dare you have your daughter change her beautiful auburn hair color to this dark, like not even done to the root, and then crimping it like you cut off her natural beauty. And you know what? That Alexei Kresnojan told me when I was watching the practice at those nationals, and he just said that one thing. He's like, people change their hair color when they're not doing well and they need a psychological shift. And I always think about that because I always get a haircut to like feel better about myself. You know what? I think of Ashley Wagner. How many times Ashley would change her hair and always something was going on, right? right. Some sort of drama. We'd hear about her boyfriend later, right? And you think about like Annabelle had that really rough outing at Ross Telecom and then the hair color is changed here and they bombed the rhythm dance. Right. And, and you know, it's for her, it's interesting because she was never the highest level single skater. And then she goes to ice dance and you're like, okay, there's a real lack of experience here and we're pushing a team forward. And without, some of these ice dancers have like 10 years, 12 years of, experience, partnering, doing all of this. And I think like it's challenging. And I think that in these big pressure moments, we're seeing, you know, a lack of experience, maybe a lack of simpatico between her and the partner, you know, the partner that's like, I don't know, he seems like an interesting personality when if you follow him on Instagram or any of those things when he's like, taking the picture with the guns or whatever he's doing, but um, he's a character and you just watch the mistakes and you're like, hmm, this is chaotic. It's gonna take, I, I don't think it's gonna happen in like a fairy tale way. Like I think that there's gonna be ups and downs and ups and downs. And I think that they really need to work on the skating skills, keep working on those. And she's improved a lot so much. But this may be the discipline for Russia that I feel may want to assess its depth situation. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, with the pairs, we were there are a lot that aren't there yet, but are, will be intriguing to watch. In dance, it's less clear what happens next. Well, I think it's interesting is that they, they, they tried so hard to win last year, right? And it's just like, you can- That's that Galyamov thing. When you're trying too hard for that, it, it shows. It doesn't work. What the hell is Tapanova and Bukin's free skate about when they switch from <laughs> music to crime your river? Okay, <laughs> so I want to talk about this, Dave, because you then, so you didn't watch um, the TED commentary, you're saying. Because uh, I watched. I have no, but as a human. So is it a different video feed? Yes, they have it with Yagudin's commentary. When they divide it by skater, you can listen to the Yagudin commentary. I recommend and it. And is it the same video that they're using? And I'll tell you why I asked, because there's this trick. Same feed, but it is not with Ted. And it just makes it such a better view. I didn't get to watch live because I was at the rink working on my own skating. But you know what? It's okay. Well, so here's the thing. And you know what? I, and then there was one of those people that was like attacking Jackie Wong because they didn't like one of the quick hits he gave or something. And then they were attacking his skating. What did Jackie do to them? Okay, like, come on. Jackie, who just kind of plays at even keel, just giving you like data. Whatever. Oh, weird. Okay. Um, so, surely I had a point. What were we talking about? Oh, yes. Right. If I listen to the TED commentary. And because I just, the, the music shifts. There's like a weird moment that I thought might have just happened on my video replay, where it's like, dee, da, 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 wah, wah, wah. like almost like um, sometimes on YouTube when your copyright issues are coming up and you have to speed something a little up or slow something a little down so it distorts the quality of sound and then it's a different time and then you're out of that. It sounds like they do that halfway through the program before they start transitioning into the Justin Timberlake. And I thought the Justin Timberlake transition almost makes sense musically, but it does not make sense as it happens. I think there's a way to have it make sense to the ear. So the program is Primavera. It's Anadi's Primavera, and then it goes into Crimey River. 
is this a spring theme that makes sense in a Russian mind? Because musically, it makes no freaking sense. Musically, it almost makes sense in that transition because just like just... April showers bring May flowers. Like what? <laughs> like, and they're taking the Crimea River literally, and they don't realize it's about a breakup. And like the right. other is it like actually about spring. Like what right. is going on? <laughs> yeah. The, now the mood shift works for me. But they have to, it, it, it tonally, it's, the key signatures are clashing and it does not work. And I think they may have tried to, I'm curious to watch another feed at some point to hear if the music does indeed modulate there or if they're forcing that modulation because they think it helps with the transition, but it's a real misstep. So, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah. How did you think they did here? Because we've not seen them because they also have been ill. Honestly? Of course. Really rough. Yeah. <laughs> really rough thankful that they were the only sort of top contender like i think tiffany could have won and i think if people care more about ice dance they might argue that tiffany and jonathan deserve to win here if mm. we're being like really honest about it you know yeah like, they look well they're very interesting tiffany and jonathan but but you in know. terms of like star power and you know who should win here to set people up like Whatever, you know. Because what was your take when you saw them in person in Vegas? Slow. We, yes, because I've been a proponent of them. Also, I'm gonna own it. I, it's that unfair, I'm rooting for them because I find them so pretty. I, I'm just inherently rooting for them. And um, I love his hair. They have a big performance quality on camera that it was so funny that when we saw it live in Vegas, it kind of disappeared. And obviously they did these exact same programs and, and it just sort of fell flat for people that seem so big on TV. I was like, we may have found one of those skating teams that looks better on camera than in person. Oh yeah. Where so many times I am, like for instance, Zagitova randomly, I enjoyed so much more in person than I enjoy watching on television. So it was, it's interesting to me because again, I think they were giving us like big performance energy, but I have a feeling it may not have carried in the arena. I love their rhythm dance in the 2018, 2019 season. Ba -da, da, 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 da. And it was so, when the music stopped in the middle at that one Grand Prix event, I think it was, and they had to stop there and then just start again into that. They know how to go big in those kinds of moments. But yeah, these didn't do that for me in person. Yeah. But their ice dance coach, like, there's always been the talk of would they leave Arena Juk, like, you know. And it's interesting because they had another team here that I watched as well that had a lot of the same big performative qualities mm -hmm. of uh, Stepanova and Bukin on TV. So it was interesting that that must be something that that, you know, particular team promotes in their skaters or I don't know if that's being around each other that they both kind of bring that out or what. It was interesting. Well, you need a razzmatazz and ice dance. I mean, come on. It's you gotta give him some. <laughs> a little razzle dazzle there. <laughs> razzle dazzle. You can't just do the sit spin um, twizzles. <laughs> we get it. You can do, you can twizzle in a sit spin. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. It looks awful like a spin to me. But um, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I enjoyed the Russian Nationals, I have to say, Jonathan. I thought it was fun. Um, I did as well. Did you have a favorite? Right, Natov also, you know, was. The quad loop was very impressive. So impressive that it was originally, you know, like when you fight with your TV and you're like, wait a second, that was a quad. And then it I knew it. Back. And I was like, they just said triple is my eye play. No, that was definitely my a quad. crazy or is it right? That's the one thing where that where Sandra will say that box takes you out of the performance. Right. It does. Okay. Yeah. And it was especially impressive because there was almost no setup into it. It was it was pretty remarkable. I don't know if you noticed those GOEs that like Shervakova was getting for some of those jumps. You're like, wait a Fives. second. Fives. Fives. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You know what? She got just about the score of Han Yu. It's okay. She's an angel girl. Okay. My if, daughter. If you are telling us you think those are the same things, then score away. Yeah. Only in Russia, okay? Exactly. It is what we expect from Russia, okay? Exactly. The theatrics, the corruption, the emotion. The, the, ch the chin quivers. But I missed Tarasova, okay? Of course. Can you imagine how she would have reacted? I mean, Yagudin cried on TV, very important. He has learned from the best. 
but I wanted to Roswell. Why wasn't, if she couldn't walk, why didn't they zoom her in? We could have put her in another box. Well, same thing like Ted. Ted's just on a microphone sitting in Canada. Like she could have yeah. done that. Why can't Tatiana Antolevna like get on a microphone and talk to us, all right? Yeah, so little. Nothing. He was literally drinking on the job. Why was Duras over here, okay? Giving us this. That was his commenter and Kolya. Then we have Kolya having Annabelle like ruin her naturally beautiful hair. But some of these Russians just need to like take a seat for a minute, okay? Like there are <laughs> element. <laughs> I remember this this gymnast from Georgia, Gigi Marino, told me once. She goes, "I view coaching as fifty percent technique and fifty percent bullshit art." And I was like, "Yes, yes, you know." That's correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I see it at the rink, and I identify who is what and on which which and what part. and what percentage point you're in at the moment. Yes, like, this is that other fifty percent. Okay, mm -hmm. just got it. Got it. Oh, but this that makes sense. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> but tomorrow we are going to be judging, uh, not judging, tomorrow we're going to be discussing the Japanese figure skating championships. And then later on, coming up over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be judging the 2007 Worlds. We're going to be talking to Lorna Brown. So a lot coming up. A uh, lot has happened. So hold an edge and look sexy, everyone. All right. Bye now. <laughs>